All right, so let's let's here's where we left off. We were working on our our, our favorite views plugin, and um, we had a couple problems that we were having uh, that we just weren't able to solve uh, very quickly. It took a little bit more time to, to look into them. Um, one of them was the uh, with the uh, the favorite views the um, uh, the uh, the image background uh, it wasn't it wasn't working very well. Um, so here we go, 6 by 16 image, 16 bit depth using only standard 16 colors. So this is old stuff for compatibility with 2002, 2003. Um, but what it appears, as I recall, the changes I needed to make this work were I had to essentially make the background color be 0, 254, 0. It really, really seems to be um, a fan of that. Um, so uh, I changed the background color to match that and brought it back in, and that seemed to be the thing that, that, that made the icon appear. The other problem we were having was we had we were changing the text box here, and we wanted it to display the correct name over here. We we're, were having a lot of problem with that, and what we we ultimately ended up uh, that sounded like like Superman flying in through the window right there. I'm, I might have to check that, but uh, but but the uh, um, what, what ultimately we were close when we were doing the I property notify, I think, but the real key. Um, to fixing this was when I changed this from a list of super views to a binding list. And once I did that, I didn't have to do any of this crazy stuff like saying, okay, here, you know, the, the um, uh, we had some code here before we were playing with where when the uh, text changed, we would go in and we would try to manually update the view on the, the, the list view, which is this list box. We try to manually refresh it and that and, and we were just having, we spent about a half hour trying to get that to work. It had nothing to do with plugins, just had to do only with um, .NET Framework and .NET Controls. And, and uh, ultimately, binding list is what um, solved that problem. So I solved those two problems in the code. And then now, the next thing I want to talk about is storage. Because we were able to, at the last time, we were able to save views and recover views. But the storage piece was, was the missing component. And so let me show you how to do that. So um, let's see. So we've got here's where we save the current view, and and the, the way I want to do it is anytime there's a change made to the view, um, to the views, I want to go out and call a save views. And this might be a little bit inefficient, uh, as you'll see in a little bit, because I'm also going to want to save the views when um, I want to save the views whenever we rename a view, and the rename can happen you know live using the text box, you know, one character at a time, uh, but. Uh, if we get to that point, we can do something different, like use, use, for example, maybe a timer or just say the views are dirty and then save whenever, like, solution closes or something like that. That's an option we can do. But for now, uh, let's do this. So we're going to go to save views. We've got a, we've got a method called save views. And um, now, normally, if you go into the code rush object and you go into options, I think there's a method in here called get storage. And this will get you storage that is associated with the options pages. Okay, so um, let's do this for options page storage. And we use this when we have create our own options pages and we want to then get the storage associated with that options page. I believe there's also, let's go into codrush.documents.active text document. I think there is storage. Oh, come on, I thought there was something here. There it is. It's just a property called storage. So active text document. Um, for storage bound to the document, and I'm not sure if this is persistent though. So let's let's actually now that I've said this, let's um, let's see if we have any clues to whether it's storage or not, or whether it is um, it's document storage. Ah, this is a different kind of storage than what I was thinking before. Okay, so this is. This storage is going to be um, uh, not persistent. Okay, so that storage is not persistent, um, but it is useful. Uh, but useful for session state associated with the document. Okay, so we have this and we have this and then the last thing that we have is code rush dot source and here's where things get interesting for us a method called get storage we can pass in a project 
or a solution element right there. So either one of those two. So this one is useful for project or solution based storage. Okay. I'll put this up near here because these first two are persistent. But this one is not. Okay? So we're going to come in here. We want to go into codrush.source.git storage. And it needs to have, you can either add a project element or a solution element. I'm going to have these views be solution wide. So when we open up a new solution, we're going to, we're going to load up these, these elements here. So I want to go in and I want to say codrush.source.active solution. Okay, that's the solution element. The page that I want to pass in, um, we'll call this our, uh, our favorite views. Okay. okay, so that is our storage. Let's take this. Um, Wait, actually, let's not do that yet. Let's not do that yet. Let's declare local for it. There's our storage. Let's uh, remove this type qualifier so we have a using statement for it. Let's take this and uh, extract that into a, its own method. We'll call it uh, git solution storage. Like that. Let's get get back. So now I've got my storage, and now let's see what what's our object inside of here that we're working with. It's all views. Okay, so let's say we want to we want to go into storage dot um, write to thirty two, and the section is going to be um, views, and the key is going to be um, view count maybe like that, and the value is going to be all views dot count. We'll just save out the count. And then, let's see, do we have any other properties in here that we need to worry about? It doesn't look like it. So this is just our, our tool window plugin right there. So we're going to just do that. And um, all views is a binding list of types of review. And so we want to iterate through each of those. So for each right there. And then we want to say all view dot store and pass in storage. Like that. And let's put it there. There's your storage coming in. Let's add that using statement as well. And before I go any further here, let's just I want to just go back and look over here. I, I wanted to change this name from all view to simply view. Like that. All right. So we're going to store that out and pass in its store its, its piece. Um, you know what I want to do is uh, Well, let's go ahead and get, yeah, you know, here's the thing is I want to get it kind of, a, instead of doing a for each, I want to do a for loop. So I'll convert this to a for loop. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to, um, I want to um, pass in an integer to it, to inside of here, so that we uh, have the index. So we're going to add parameter, and we'll call this index, and we'll pass in i. Right there. Okay. So now that we're here, we can do something and say, well, okay, so we need a, a variable type string. We're going to call this section. And that's going to be equal to, um, what's our class? There it is right there. Super view plus index dot to string. Now that we have this section, now we can work with storage inside here. So we can say things like storage dot, what do we have to store here? We have a name property. An active file, also a string. There are two strings right here that looks like we need to store, and then that's anything else. So storage dot write string, and one of these. So the section is we'll use the section piece that we just built, and then here we're going to say name. We pass in name. Oops, just name. There's the name property we're passing in. We'll duplicate this down, and then this one's going to be I think active file. That's the active file property that's part of this. Double check that. Yeah. And then we have this doc views piece right here. Let's come back here. Let's do a for each on the doc. Whoops. Do a for each on the docs views. 
And then here we want to call docview.store and pass some stores again. Like that. And let's implement that. Storage. Get rid of that type qualifier. Let's do the same thing. We add the parameter. Call this index. And we'll pass in. We're going to pass in i, which doesn't exist yet. I'll just do this, and then I'll convert that. So now it's we're passing that in. And um, what else? Well, by the way, I've seen this twice here, Rory. And 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 here, let me undo it. You see what I'm doing here? The uh, I'm sorry, not here. 4H to 4, can you just note the time so the devs can see this? 4H to 4 is yeah. putting an unnecessary set of parens around this. And I'm not sure if that's something in just my build or something we're shipping, but let's, let's have the devs look at that. Okay, so there's the call to store. Oh, the other thing you know what I want to do is I want to, I think, pass the parent section name inside of here in, on the internal piece. So I think I'm going to add one more parameter. This is going to be a string, and it's going to be the parent section name, and we'll call this the pass in section. Section here. Okay. So there we've got store. Third section going in. And now, so we're going to come in here and we're going to say we want to create a new section in here. This is called this section is equal to the parent section plus um, doc view plus index not to string. Like that. So parent section name. So it's going to be something like you know super view one. I'm going to put a dot here. Dot doc view zero or doc view three or something like that. That's our section. And so now we'll come into storage again. And we'll say storage dot um, right string. We'll, we'll just take in the properties one at a time here down here. So we're going to pass in section. Comma, and then the key's going to be the proper name, file name, and then we're going to have the string value, which is file name again. It brings down here. And this one becomes into the right string. This becomes right int 32. And you can see right there. And then we need to pass in, uh, let me just drop a marker here. Copy the clipboard. Alt Shift Home swaps me back. Control B is paste replace. Control B again right there. Shift enter to duplicate line, Alt Shift Home, copy, clipboard, Alt Shift Home, Control B, Control B, swap, copy, duplicate line, Control B, Control B, like that. Okay, and that takes care of storing the properties of DocView. Now we might change some of the properties of DocView. If we do, um, if we add any new, new properties here, we're going to need to change the store. We also need to create a, a, a mechanism for loading as well. And uh, I think I want to do that before we run. <clears throat> so let's look at, um, wait, a couple other things too I just realized. Over here, let's go to our, um, our this is our tool window. And our tool window has an events uh, um, control on it. And the events has, uh, as you might expect, some events. And I think we're already, are we already, we're not handling anything yet. Okay, interesting. So uh, I was thinking maybe we were, but turns out we were not. When you create a new tool window, it will drop one of these controls down here for you so you can get access to the Visual Studio events. So <clears throat> what we want is our, our events that have to do with solutions. So solution opened, we need that. Um, I'm, interesting, I don't see a solution closed here. Interesting, so we do have solution open, but we do not, do not have solution closed. So oh, before closing solution we have though, Interesting. After closing solution, I see. That's where they are. I see. Okay. So we have. Um, so let's take uh, after closing solution. We'll handle that as well. Um, so solution open. This is where we want to load in the, um, the new pieces. So it's going to go like what is this? All views. Dot clear. Like that. So that's step one. And then we want to say something like this. Um, we want to read. The number of views that we saved. Where's our other code for? Let's go look and find our code that we just wrote for uh, and save views. Let me cut that the clipboard, come down, and we'll paste that in here. Create a new method called load views. 
and let's just put it here. Let's just call him load news. Oh, come on. There it is. All right. We're we'll calling load use when the solution is open, and when the solution is closed, we're going to just clear all the needs we have already. So what's cool about this is that this event for when the solution is open and closed will only be called when uh, the tool window is visible. This event is tied to this tool window and is only hooked up and registered. So if the tool window um, if the tool window goes away or is never shown, we're not. If the tool window is never shown, we're never going to get the events. If we close it, I'm not sure if we still get the events or not. I think we might if we close. I'm not sure. We'd have to test that. But I know that we won't get these otherwise, which is nice because it's 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 nice and efficient. Unless it's only if somebody brings the window up. One thing though is if they do bring the window up, we do want to uh, load those. We want to load views from the initializer for this. Let's so call load views from the uh, initialized plugin piece right here. And so that way we can load a solution, then load the views, and then we should get all the data and the storage from it. So load views. First thing we're doing is we're clearing it. Then uh, we want to do we, we what we want to do is we want to grab this view count right here and call this view count. Let's see if it's storage dot need in thirty two. Now what I need to do is I need to Get that bit of code in there. So now we've got storage. So we have that, and then we want to do something kind of similar to this. We're going to have that loop again. So we'll have this going up to view count. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do in here is do something like this. We're going to say super view dot from storage. And we'll pass in uh, oops, we'll pass in storage, and that's going to create a new whoops, that's going to create a new super view. And then we're going to go into all views dot add and call all views dot add on that. Now here we passed in an index, and we're going to need to do the same here. Pass in an index as well so that we can get the right section to work with. You still with me, Rory? You turned off your microphone. Oh, I can't hear Rory at all. Hey, folks. No, you're right. I'm muted oh, myself. Oh, OK, good. <laughs> I was like, hmm, what? OK, maybe it's just me talking to myself. No, That's no, not at all. I mean, it's very interesting, because you've created a number of levels of storage. You've got your solution storage object, which associates everything you're about to save with only the current solution. Then you've written storage built into each of the levels themselves, so that each know how to handle themselves. And yeah. here we are, effectively using that to best effect as you say, passing in um, initially, uh, sorry, saving, say, 0 to 10, if that's how many you had, and then saving, obviously, the, the quantity of those, so that you can use it when you come to reload everything. Again, it's right, you the same quantity. So it's all kind of coming together. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad it's all coming together. That's awesome. <laughs> Never, it's always much better than what usually happens, right, is it's all kind of falling apart um, <laughs> on our show, it seems. So at least no. It, well, no, you're right. It's not. It's we we go we 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 have about a 73 percent success rate. Seventy three percent of the show is pure gold, and um, and the other forty nine percent is check my math on that. But the other forty nine percent is a, a little shaky. Well, because right. we're not afraid to dive off and just explore stuff. That's right. Yeah. That's we true. We take the chances. We take That's the risks. Right. We, we take the risks. We're we're a little scary. All right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get, do the same thing we have back here. When we grab the set, I'm going to say sections equal to this. So the same logic is there. So we'll get the same section. I'm going to just take these two. I'm going to take this whole code because we're going to kind of similarly follow the logic. We're going to we're going to spin this around a bit. So we're going to call read change right string to read string on both of those. Uh, take this piece out here. Put it over on the left. Take this out. Put it on the left. Remember that plugin we wrote a while back that converted yeah. reads to writes. We did not write a version that converts writes to reads, so oh, no. so that's why I'm doing this by hand. So there's our uh, oh wait not section our super view here. Sorry, my bad. Control B to replace replace. There we go. Super view both of those. Uh, now down in here we want to come in and say something like so we're going to need a call from docuse docuse dot add, and then we're going to pass something into it. 
and let's do bad block limiters. And we're gonna I think what we're gonna do is this doc view dot from storage again. Has in storage section and I this time, and that's gonna be equal to uh, my new doc view. And we're gonna add that new doc view here. And this, oh we need to re read the count. Oops, did we write the count on the last time? I don't think we did. We need to write the count here too. So we'll we'll come in here, we'll say write in 32 section doc view count. And then we'll do that. So there's our doc view count. So now we can know how many we need to reconstruct. That's what's going on here. Is all that kind of is this kind of are we No, this is good. Doc view count equals that. Just and I want to pass in a default value of negative one. Because normally the default value is zero. Wait, do I is that my good? Yeah, you know what? I guess I'm okay with zero. I'm okay, I'm okay with the default. I guess the thing I was thinking is what you can do is if you pass in a value that that you know whatever is is not likely to be ever written to normally, you can then check to see if it was never ever written. And so if this was negative one, we know that it's a brand new file. So we could do a test like that if we wanted to. But I'll just keep the default at zero because I just have this flow loop down here and it, it's just gonna fall out of it. So if there are no views associated with it. Alright, so now we need the document dot at oh wait, 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 what's wrong? Doc views is part of this, right? Doc views. Why am I getting this? What's wrong? The object reference. Oh, that's the problem. There. Also, we're seeing this squiggly line up here. We need to change this to read. 32. Now we're left with from storage. So let's go in and declare that method. Storage section index. Let's come down here and we just reverse these out. Just when that plugin, if we had written it the other way, it would be super awesome right now. So what I'm wondering, Mark, is at some point, is it just as valid to use something like selection inversion? And maybe we could show people how to configure that. Maybe not today, not, but um. not not today. I guess is the answer to that question. <laughs> so so yes, we could. Um, we can do that. We can do that in a future one. Selection inversion is 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 tricky to work with. Um, and my intention is to make it a lot easier. Uh, so, um, all right. So we've got section is equal to. We'll we call this. We we'll rename this to parent section. And um, so section is good. We want to come in and say new doc view. A new doc view. Okay. Whoops. And then come in here. Doc view dot file name. And then return new document. Code look okay? I think it does. All right. So so let's set some breakpoints here to just kind of step through this. So we've got from storage, we've got store. This is the low level stuff for the actual document. And again, so so it's kind of like we want to put a, a to do up here or something like that. So by the way, if you need a to do, it's slap forward slash t. It gives you that. By the way, if you need translate to translate something, like you have some string on a line. For example, put the character near the end of the type in slash t to translate. It's the same template, spans two different ways. So thumb empty line you use to do, otherwise it gives you translate. So we use that to, to mark lines for translation. So all right, so anyway, um, to do uh, if new properties added here must oops, must be addressed in the from storage. And store methods. And we can do the same thing over in SuperView. I think the same kind of kind of node over here. And we can say the properties that here must be addressed with some storage and store methods. So we can do that, and let's uh, um, let let's set some breakpoints here. Let's set breakpoint. There's my store. There's my from storage. There. Let's see. Do we need any other events? Um, we don't, nothing is coming to mind. Oh, wait. Save current view. So when we do save current view, are we calling save views at the end? We are. Okay. What about when we delete the selected view? 
So right here, we want to uh, we want to delete that, or sorry, when we delete it, we want to save the use to. Oh, and the other thing, the other th question is, is what about when we make changes here? So right at this point, this is the point where the text box changes. This is where we want to come in and do save views there. All right, so I think I'm now we're saving it all the times we're making changes. This is the one I was most concerned about because you know if we type something in very quickly, it's going to save and save and save. It's going to rewrite the whole file. If we have a lot of views, that might slow down. You know, that might cause a noticeable performance. So this is like the easiest to code, but maybe not the best. Easiest to code one line, but probably not the most performant. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's run it and see how we're doing. So there were there were some other issues we found, and um, in addition to this, but let's just let's take this, take it out, and we'll play with this, and we'll test storage to make sure the storage is working as we are expecting it to. So here we go. We're up. I'm going to open up a large project. This is um, source code to Code Rush, or actually DX Core. We'll open this up now. In preparing solution, one of these one of the things that fires you is, is the event that says "Open Solution." So I'm expecting us to switch back over to um, our running application, which looks like we're doing now. And at the breakpoint, oh, no, I'm not. No, we didn't go over to it, did we? Oh, I know why we didn't. The reason why we didn't is because the tool window is not up. That's a that's a there it is right there. Our favorite views with the heart on it. So um, uh, so yeah, that was the thing I was saying before. Is if we are um, if we don't don't have this up, we're not going to see events. So now we bring the events up. Uh, now it's interesting though. In, in bringing it up, we should have gotten a call to load views, and I thought I had a breakpoint there. Let's see, I don't have a breakpoint there. All right, so we missed that opportunity there. So let's close the solution, reopen it. Close the solution. And now That's let's see. doing that, Mark. We've got a question. Um, it's been partially answered by Alex already. Um, the question is, where is the storage? Uh, where does the storage actually store its details? So if you wanted to clear everything out, where would, where would you eliminate these things from? I think you know, we that the options are stored in a sort of a standard location. But this is a subtly different thing, isn't it? It is. And you know what? I don't. I have no idea is my first first off the top of my head answer. I thought it was stored out in the, the solution. We'll, we'll answer that question by the end of the day, but, okay. but, I, but it is, it, I, it's not. I think what we're, we're, we're doing is we're putting it in the documents section of, uh, under the, the current user that's under, it's working with Windows. So I, okay. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's somewhere in there, maybe an app, app document section. And I, I need to like, you know, drill around and search for it. But, um, but uh, but and I'll do that the next time you start talking I'll, I'll bring up something and start looking at that. But now let's look at load views and we'll just kind of sure. through it. So we've got all, called all views cleared. There's a call to getting decoupled storage. There's the the the, the uh, getting the call to to getting the solution storage, which is right here. That's what we did and we went, we asked for it by name with favorite views. So there's our storage. We have it and. Uh, and then what's next? So view count is what zero. So we have nothing going on there. That's all easy. Load views. And we have a breakpoint on save views. Let's set the breakpoint right here. Okay, and then we'll run it. So that's our opening up. Let's just go right over here. Yeah. So the, my first guess was, okay, well, let's go in here and let's open the folder in Windows Explorer. And I went through and I looked at. It and I go, yeah, it's not there. We we would have put it right here, and it's not there. So my next guess is, okay, let's go up over into. Um, into uh, my well, let's go to my documents and then go up one folder right here. Where do we have app data? Could it be there? Is that where we put this stuff? And this is where it's going to be like a little bit of. Uh, so I'm looking for like Dev Express. So not there. Not in local. Try roaming. Not roaming. Local not low. Wait, come on. One of these. Dev Express, huh? It's interesting. So I thought it was in there. Well, let's just see where our settings are stored. Standard settings are normally in roaming um, code rush for vs.net. What am I missing? App data, roaming. I just missed, oh, I thought I was looking for, I was looking for Dev Express. All right, so let's see. So nothing in there and nothing in here. Is it, could it be in settings? 
options services no let's do this let's do a search for for what is it favorite views let's try that and see what we see see our favorite views of issue suppression now show color favorites now Oh, seriously, is it going to be that hard? Oh, we haven't saved anything yet, so hold on. Let's let's keep this, and we'll run this again in a second and see if we can find it. I'm pretty sure we're in the right spot is the answer to that question. And um, and if it turns out we really can't find it, I'll, I'll research and get the answer and, and put it in the blog post. So, all right, so so let's open up uh, a couple source files here. We'll open up this uh, assembly info and open up this and uh, this assembly version info. Oh, it's open already because it's it's linked. I bet it's yeah, it's linked. I see it. And um, and we'll open this too. So we've got like identify record, some assembly stuff, and the core engine. We'll come over here. We'll save the current view. All right. So uh, here we're going to get the storage. We're going to read. Uh, so at this point we're calling save views. The views already been added. So we've already added that. Gone through that code where that the view's been added. So now we're adding the view count of one. So we have a view count. This is what we should be searching for right there. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just putting it over in the other search keys, and we'll, we'll search for this after we write it out. So we're going to go through that, and we're going to then call store. Let's go inside there. And there's the section super view zero. Writing the name, the active file, its count. There are four documents here. Iterating through each of these, calling uh, store on that particular document. And passing out, for example, file and use assembly and they'll be passed out. Um, top line selection anchor all being passed out. So let's just go ahead and run those. Run through that breakpoint there. And so we've saved the view. Let's give it a name. Uh, we will call it uh, our happy view. So I just typed the letter H and then followed by letter A, but it didn't quite get in. So we got to the point where we're saving views because we're saving views because. Every time we're making a change in here, it's calling save. So there's HA, save, save, save. So that's what's happening. So this is where I'm concerned about the performance issue. And so um, I, I don't have a, off the top of my head a really awesome uh, solution for this yet. But um, so right now I just have a crude solution. So um, let's see what do I have to do. Refresh over here. No items match your search. Come on. Guys, sorry, I'm, let me bring this over so you can see it. No, I just match your search. Um, I'm going to get up one folder. I just have to go back like this. Is it possible there's an actually an isolated storage at the operating system level that we're just taking advantage of? I don't know. Let's see if we find anything. If we don't get anything here, I'll have to ask. Uh, we'll have to ask one of the devs to look into it, see where where the uh, where this is actually being stored. Um, however, one of the so no items match your search. So what, one of the questions was how do I clear it out? It's actually possible to clear this out simply by clearing it and then saving. In other words, writing out to it that I have no views saved. So you could do that, but that may not be exactly what you're looking for. You may be more interested in like clearing actually clearing it out. What's interesting to me is that it's, it's it does not appear to be out here in this location. Let's look at it one more time just to make sure that nothing new has come out here. Yeah, this is where exactly where I would expect it to be. So that, that way if I was if it was solution based, I copy the solution somewhere else, it would go move with it. So I'll look into this, we'll find out. So let's do this though. Let's close the solution. And now we have happy. Happy goes away because we cleared off the piece. Let's reopen the solution. And here's our breakpoint to load views. So we're gonna just clear this just to be Save. There's our storage view count. We have one view coming in, and now we're going to come in here. We're going to step into this. We're creating a new super view, and the section is equal to super view zero. And we're going to read from this. There's the name is equal to hap. Uh oh. So hap came in, but not happy. Mm. Interesting. That's weird. Active file. That's correct. Identifier record. Cs. That's one of the files at least. And then we're inside of DocView creating this. And here's the file name there. You see that selection anchor one. And the top line is one. All of that stuff is being restored back. So let's see. Why didn't it not save happy? That's interesting. 
which is if it didn't get an event, this is what it looks like it didn't get. Let's go back over here. Yeah, just called it hap. Like that. Now at this point, it's interesting. Let's close it and come and bring it back and see if it comes back as happy or if it comes back as hap. Looks like we need to fix that no matter what. Clear that. Clear that breakpoint and run it. And there's now it's happy. Interesting. So um, so let's kind of mess with the views. Now one of the things we don't have, we don't have the ability to overwrite the current view. When we do save, it adds the current piece and it doesn't overwrite it. Um, and so, you know, not not um, not 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 awesome necessarily, but I guess the thing is let's I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to work with um, just to show that the other pieces were all persistent as well. So let's get it so that with all of these we see at least something that's not the top line in there. And let's uh, let's select some things. How do you need tools? We'll select that over here. Select about over here. And we'll select this orange statement here. And make line around line 40 be the top of the, of, the, of the piece here. We'll select these fields. Let's go over here, save current view. This one's now unnamed. We'll call this happy with selections. So I've just typed that in. And now let's close the solution. We'll come back in when we open the solution. We should see this populated. And let's see what I'm interested to see if we get happy with selections or not. Oh, we did get the whole thing this time. Interesting. Okay, and then if I just click on it, click on happy, we should get the that. So here, here the pieces are coming in, and these are just all at one, except with the exception of this one. And that. And then let's click on happy with selections. And now we have there's the selection restored there, selection restored there, selections restored there. Very nice. All those pieces. So, okay, so it's not bad, and I think what I want to do is I kind of want to say, let's, well, I'll, I'll, you know, maybe I'll show you one other thing that I discovered that was kind of interesting. It has not much, it has more to do with tool windows than actually the way Visual Studio works. But let's uh, let's bring up the properties window, and we'll, we'll dock it over here right in with view so we can see the tab here, views. Let's bring up the menu, Oops, the, the menu. I'm going to hit uh, print screen. I'm going to go over into my paint program. I'm going to paint that. I'm going to uh, paste that in. We're going to take a look at that. Hold on a second. I'm just cropping so you can see all this other crap because I've got multiple monitors. All right. And then let's bring it over so you can kind of we can zoom in on this and you can see it. So here on the menu. I should also show you this this heart where that that how I built the heart too. So, so let's do that. Let me let me see if I can find where that heart is. Okay, here we go. It's right here. I think I think that's it. Let's look at this. Yeah. So this is interesting. The way I ended up building this, and this is kind of like something about Visual Studio. So I put around the edge, I put that, um, well, we're showing in uh, hue saturation and lightness, but if I fully click on that color and bring it up, you'll see that it is 0, 254, and 0. So that's a magic outside color. But then I also used um, uh, opacity around the edges of the heart. Okay? And, and what I wanted to show was, that opacity comes into play here on the menu. It's absolutely using that, and so you can get this nice, um, you know, uh, uh, merged anti-aliased effect if you do it on the menus. However, on down here, if you go to the back on the tabs. It's not anti-aliased. It's just the way Visual Studio does it. But what's cool is you can get, you know, uh, if you want, you can get something that lo looks better at least part of the time. If you want, and the, and the way to do it is to do it with this, this using this technique. So this is something that I just discovered. Our, our devs don't even know this. I'm, I'm pretty sure because I just I just discovered this when I was playing around the last time with this. 
So, okay, so, and then we open up, if we open up another project, then we can have storage with that. So we can just to test that really quickly. Let's open up the favorite views solution. Because you know, you know how I am, I like to do this stuff. Inception coding. Yeah. Levels within levels. Oh, and look over here, it's not cleared out. Why isn't it cleared out? That doesn't make sense to me. I'm not happy anymore. It was all working really well all of a sudden until now. So let's do this. Close the solution. Are you really telling me that if I go and open the solution, this is this is going to suck. If this comes up and loads up, <sighs> Rory, mm -hmm. you have been duped, <sighs> and I need to do more research. I think we may. So so either either so this is actually is one of those incredible sucking moments at this point. So I guess what I can do so. So here's the thing. This is one of those things that I, obviously now I'm I'm surprised by this, right? I'm like, what? No. So um, solution-based storage is not apparently working the way I was expecting it to work. I thought it was actually stored with each solution, and I thought the same thing with the project-based storage. I thought it was the same thing. Um, uh, what's What's interesting is it appears like that is not the case. So what I'm going to do though is instead of taking time and going into this and figuring this out. I'm going to, we're going to have to do yet another follow-up, I think, maybe to this, or also I'll turn it on a blog post to see what's going on with the storage here and why it's, it is, um, why it, this storage is, it's essentially following the exact same storage for a completely different solution. So we'll put this one on hold and we'll come back to it. All right? Okay. We're, we're essentially, we're, here's the thing, we're really close is, is, you know, what I'm telling you is we're really close, right? This code is all feeling good. The piece that we're going to need to work on, though, is this piece that asks for the, for um, uh, where is it? It's inside the favorite views. It's the piece that uh, gets solution storage. This is the piece that we're going to have to change. Okay. There's one thing that we can do, and and you know, well, what the heck? Well, we can kind of roll this ourselves. Let's let's look at this. Let's come in and let's close this. Let's uh, let's reopen the other one. So open up this. All right, so here's the breakpoint right here. So we're calling sort of source to get storage, and um, we could pass in the solution name for the page here. We could call it. We could pass do something like that. So we could say, let's see, active solution dot what dot full name. Do we have that? Just name. Okay. So let's see what that um, resolves to. We'll do that. We'll put it here, maybe. And right. And Hmm. Well, that was probably us, is what I want to say. Um, all right, let's go in and we'll. Uh, so we have no selections on these. So let's just select a couple of these. So we've got some interesting things. There's line seven over the top. All right, and now let's save the view. Start happy. Let's close. Let's come over here. Let's go to favorite views. And let's save this current view. We'll call this these the uh, the core files that will be actually kind of interesting to us. And then let's go back in and re go back up on the other one. And what do we got? Are we gonna load it or not? No? Let's set a breakpoint in here and find out why it's not giving the uh, the name when the uh, at the right point. 
when the solution is opening. So which event did you decide to use, Mark? I can't remember. Was it before or after solution loaded? Uh, I, solution opened was one event already that we had. So hold on, let's go back and we'll open up this one. Because I can see where if you didn't have an active solution, you might not have an active solution name. Oops, I Dev Express dot Cobrush dot core dot right. Well that yeah. all seems like a valid like a valid yeah. name there. So that is for opening it up and let's keep the breakpoint there. Well this is interesting. So we do have core here on this side. Do we maybe we just didn't save it on the other side? I'm not sure if we did or not. Well yeah. So we seem to have a problem here, right? I got to the space, but that's it. So core is here. If I close these files down, control files, I call these, control click on it, opens them. Doesn't open them all up either. There was some, some of them were not opening up. Let's go back over into this one. I just want to see if we, if we get anything there or not. Let's see what the name is now. Name is system 2010. So it's the name's okay. Yeah. On the load. And let's go back over here. Yeah, nothing here on, on this side on these views. So the views aren't there. So the, save the view. Oh, wait, there was one. It was just totally it's unnamed. There. It's, yeah. All right, hold on. And let's do this. Let's close these down and see, see if that's it. So it could be this, right? I'm typing this in, the text change, and for some reason that we're not saving out. Yeah, okay, so it is saving them out, right? There you go. So right. when we load the name into the text box, does that trip a change and when it gets initially set to blank? You know, that's that certainly a possibility. Let's look over um, in the, uh, let's go find that uh, text changed. There it is right there. Changing internally, where we're getting out, we're exiting. So it was not, so it's got to be selected. So maybe a problem with the item not being selected is we type it in. Maybe I'm not sure, but I, this is definitely a key challenge that I think we have to go look at with this. Um, yeah. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this one now, and we'll kind of say, okay, we'll be at part three in a little bit, and we'll follow up on this, and we'll 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 tweak it a little bit more, and make it better. Um, the other thing that we were talking about too, we talked about a number of other requests at the end of the last one, like what happens if this is like this, or what happens if if one of your views is like over in another side, how do we recreate that? And I do ultimately want to fix these, these challenges. I want to solve these, and I also want to work with designers as well. We have problems with designers. So we'll just have to look back and come back into that, and we'll look at that again, and we'll fix that. But so far with storage, not bad. Um, however, it looks to me like this storage is going to be in a location that is uh, not with the actual um, solution. Now, I do want to show you something with that, though, with regard to that. So let's go, um, let's see, whoops, not here. I'm going to go to favorite views, the, um, this piece. I wanted to go here. And let's, uh, let's just trigger that one more time. Let me say, let's go open up the favorite views one. And I want to just talk about another mechanism for getting storage, codrush.source. Dot, I'm sorry, not source, but options again now. Options, I think. Get storage. It may not actually be here. It may be in another location. Ops page, full name. Yeah, it's not there. Try. Come on. Not from the file. Well, I may have to research that, but I'm pretty sure so uh, and what that allows us to do um, uh, which would allow us to store settings 
we move with the solution. So you move the solution, you know, you move over the contents of the, the solution to another folder and you still get those settings. So then you could check those in the version control if you wanted to. For example, you could use you could use persistence like this to store code review notes as an example. And then persist those and, and 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 bring those back. So I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that. Um, I'll look into that and we'll we'll do that next time. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for choosing DevExpress.